Very nice, choir. Thank you so much. And Floyd, thank you always for your prayer response on the piano. We appreciate that. And I want to offer that Floyd's daughter, Sarah, is with us this morning singing in the choir. So welcome, Sarah. Good to have you here today. One more word of welcome to each and every one of you here this Sunday morning. Uh, yes, a special word of welcome to those of you watching our videos online. We give thanks that you are watching, and no matter online right now or in this place of worship, I invite us all into this time of prayer. Let us pray. Living Spirit of God, flowing fresh from your word, continue to move around us, in us, and through us this day. This we pray. Amen. Anybody else here suffer from allergies? Allergy sufferers. Hands, yes, hands going up. I see that. I do. I was reading this week about a man who had been suffering with a headache, probably due to his allergies for several days. Finally, he went to see the doctor. However, before he got to see the doctor, he had to deal with the nurse who looked and acted more like a marine drill sergeant than a nurse. When he told the nurse about his headache, the nurse yelled in a no-nonsense voice, get into that exam room, take off your clothes, and put on this hospital gown. The doctor will be in shortly. The man protested, but nurse, he said, I really don't need to go through all that. I just have this chronic headache caused by my allergies. The nurse answered, did you hear what I said? Get into that room and put on this hospital gown. So the man did as he was told. However, when he got into the exam room and closed the door, he discovered another man already in there, sitting there wearing a hospital gown. The man with the headache said to the guy in the gown, this is ridiculous. I don't know what in the world I'm doing here. I just have a headache. The other man said, you think you've got problems? I just came here to read the meter. Why are we here today? I would declare that we are here, in person and online, to worship and to praise God, and in doing so today, we celebrate Pentecost, marking that day long ago when the Holy Spirit showed up with the sound of a great wind spitting out fire and all sorts of words. Yes, Pentecost which means 50th, was a Jewish festival celebrating the spring harvest that happened 50 days after Passover. But in today's scripture reading from Acts, the emphasis is on the spirit that comes rushing in, landing on 120 believers in Jerusalem on the 50th day after Jesus' resurrection. Pentecost. The Pentecostal spirit uncontrolled and flowing with purpose, empowering those first believers to go out and testify about the difference that Jesus had made in their lives. And it emboldened the apostle Peter to preach to a crowd of bewildered skeptics, which resulted in 3,000 converts to this new faith all in one day. Truly, as I said earlier, this is the birthday of the church. And by any stretch of the imagination, this story of the church's beginning is a fabulous account full of riveting details. Think about it. Tongues of fire, rushing winds, accusations of drunkenness, mass baptism. It's easy to get caught up in the noise and the spectacle of it all. The words amazed and perplexed do make sense. But here's the detail from scripture that stands out to me. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. All of them. And they began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. At this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Friends, the key words are all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. 
the same holds true for us. While we may not have been thinking about the Holy Spirit this morning as the reason we came to church, it is by the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit that we are gathered here as a congregation this Sunday morning. As I have said before, we are not here by accident. It isn't just some random occurrence that brings each of us here. No, I believe that our gathering here on this day is one of the clearest ways we see the Holy Spirit present and accounted for in our lives. All of us are filled with the Holy Spirit. And this congregation is filled with the Holy Spirit. But what about away from the church building and outside this time of worship? How obvious is the Holy Spirit to us away from the church? And how obvious is the Holy Spirit to us in the people who come across us outside of the church. Former President Jimmy Carter, in one of the books he wrote entitled, Why Not the Best, shared an incident that made him aware how his priorities shifted when he was away from the church. Each year, the congregation of, Plains, of the Plains Baptist Church in Plains, Georgia would hold a one-week revival service. In preparation for the week, the leaders of the congregation would venture out into the community, inviting non-church members to come to the services. As a deacon, Jimmy always participated in this exercise, visiting a few homes, reading some scripture, having prayer, sharing some religious beliefs. Then he would talk about the weather, the crops, and be on his way. Jimmy wrote, I was always proud enough of this effort to retain a clear conscience throughout the remainder of the year. One day, Jimmy was asked to speak at a church in Preston, Georgia. The topic he was assigned was about the power and importance of sharing his faith. As Jimmy said in his study writing the speech, he decided it would make a great impression on the audience if he shared with them about all those home visits he had made for God. He figured in the 14 years since returning from the Navy, he had conducted 140 visits. He proudly wrote that number in the script of his speech. As he sat there, though, he began to reflect on the 1966 Georgia governor's race. As he campaigned for the state's highest office, he spent 16 to 18 hours a day trying to reach as many voters as possible. At the conclusion of the campaign, Jimmy calculated that he had met more than 300,000 Georgians. Sitting in his study, the truth became evident. He wrote in that book, the comparison struck me. 300,000 visits for myself in three months and 140 visits for God in 14 years. The point Jimmy was making is clear, 300,000 visits for an election versus 140 visits for God. I get that and I take that point that we all must consider our priorities, especially as people of faith, as we go about our days outside the church walls. And I would ask that we keep former President Carter in our prayers as he continues to receive hospice care at his home in Plains, Georgia. Still, for the purpose of sharing this illustration today, I just want to stress that each one of those 140 visits had significance. We never know the positive difference one such visit in the name of the Lord will make. Anything we can do powered by the Spirit of the Lord can have an impact that goes far beyond what we might ever be able to comprehend. It's kind of like a balloon. On its own, in the beginning, it doesn't look like much, but once the air goes into it, it begins to expand and it becomes more noticeable. You can hold on to it, but then when you let it go, it moves, it flies, it works its way all around. You never know exactly where it will go and where it will land, but it will go someplace making a difference along the way. 
then depleted, out of air. It can be refilled and ready for another flight. Jesus did not promise and then give the disciples the power of the Holy Spirit so that they could stay huddled up together in that room. He gave them the Holy Spirit so that when they went out, even if they did not know where they were going or what they were doing for sure, they would make a difference powered by the Spirit of God. They had a purpose given from God. On this Pentecost Sunday, gathered here for the purpose of worshiping and praising God, and today, witnessing the renewal of wedding vows for Greg and Vicki, brought together and held together by the Spirit of God's love, let us never lose sight of the difference God's loving Spirit makes in our lives and out in the world. I read a poem this week by Malcolm Geit entitled Pentecost. Hear these words. Today we feel the wind beneath our wings. Today the hidden fountain flows and plays. Today the church draws its breath and sings. And every flame becomes a tongue of praise. This is the feast of fire, air, and water poured out and breathed into the earth, awakened and translated from death to birth. The right words come in their right order and every word spells freedom and release. Today the gospel crosses all borders, all tongues are loosened by the Prince of Peace. The lost are found in his translation whose mother tongue is love in every nation. Friends, Scripture makes it clear. All are filled with the Holy Spirit of God. When you go forth from here today, you will be sharing that Spirit. I don't say that as a pastoral directive. I don't want it to be anything you feel like you should be doing or you must do. It's simply going to happen. You share the loving Spirit of God everywhere you go. We all do. And like in Scripture, the sharing of God's Spirit in this world takes a multitude of voices. Every voice matters. So yes, yes indeed, the Spirit of God is upon us. And that is the reason we are here. Let us pray. Holy One, your spirit is here. It is in us. And we are being called to share it everywhere we go with everybody we encounter. Your spirit of embrace. Your spirit of inclusion. Your living and loving Holy Spirit. Amen.